Good morning, all you happy people. It is a gorgeous fall morning here in the northeast mountains of Georgia, north, middle, north, whatever. <laughs> the, the foothills of the Appalachians. Um, it's absolutely a gorgeous day. It was 46, I think, when I got up. It's probably, you know, low 50s right now. So, hoodie, sweatpants, you know, all the, all the things because... This girl doesn't like the cold. Um, so I wanted to hop on here real quick because something exciting is happening today. Um, and I know I haven't updated you guys in a little while on a few things going on. So um, I'm sure you can hear the chickens. I've got one one chicken that's very upset with me right now. And another one who is singing an egg song, hopefully laying an egg as we speak. We have been getting eggs consistently two to three a day. Um, they are all brown. So my copper morans and um, probably, I'm thinking my bard rock, although update on her in a minute. Um, and I'm not sure which other one because it's a dark brown, a medium brown, and a light brown. So even though I named everybody after Disney princesses, I'm calling those three my three little bears because um, it's just kind of fun. It's, it's you know, dark, medium, light. It's, it's really kind of neat, especially when we get all three on the same day. It's kind of neat to see. Um, but I made a couple of a poop. Um, I'm not going to go down there. I was just down there a minute ago. But just so that you can see, I got this waterer, um, which has a lid that just pops right off. The old waterer screwed on and had a rubber gasket. And I had the hardest time getting that lid off when I had to fill it up. And sometimes I had a hard time getting it back on. So I'm actually going to clean it up, probably sell it on Marketplace and, and get rid of it. Um, somebody else can deal with it. I just don't have the time or the energy to deal with that. This is so much easier and it's just over five gallons. Um, so it's fantastic. And the ducks can get a little bit more water because it's got a deeper well around the bottom. I also moved the nesting boxes along this back wall. They did seem to prefer to lay in the box that was on this wall and I would occasionally find them on the ground in front of that nesting box. So I moved both nesting boxes on that wall and I don't know if you can see it right there. Um, I have added a coupe light. So I just basically used my heat safe um, brooder coupe light um, and just got a regular LED bulb. It is daylight, a daylight bulb. Um, and I just put that in and that's actually, I'll bring it over here. That's actually on a timer and it's up here at the house. So I can control the timer up here at the house. Um, so I've got that plugged into the timer. Um, this cord, the orange cord is for the electric fence and then the green cord is for the coupe light. It's got an outdoor electric timer. Hang on, let's open it up. And then see I can set evening and morning hours. That's morning, that's evening. Um, so it goes on at it goes on at 6 a.m. and goes off at I think I've got it set right now to go off at 9 and then it'll come on I think at 5 and go off at 8 so I'm trying to provide them as much light in the hours where they don't get as much in the middle of the day it's a little bit better in the morning and the late afternoon the lighting in that coop is just absolutely terrible for them so um, I'm trying to to stimulate daylight as much as possible for them um, to hopefully stimulate the ones who aren't laying yet to lay because it's frustrating when you've got nine birds and you're only getting three eggs a day so um, hopefully within the next they say it can take four to six weeks for light simulation to actually stimulate them to lay because that's it's in their pituitary gland is what tells them um, when they have enough daylight to lay um, the oldest birds are six months this month. The younger birds are about five, just a little over five because they're about three weeks apart. So the oldest birds are like six months and a week or six months and two weeks. So the, the, um, the younger ones are like five months and three weeks, almost six months. So everybody at this point should be laying. Um, I've got all breeds that should start laying by the time they're six months. Um, some of them should have started laying between four and, and five. Um, so I'm thinking that, you know, a big part of it is that they just don't have enough light in their coop. Um, they've got plenty of food. They get fresh food every day. 
They've got plenty of water. They get fresh water every day. So it's not a nutrition deficit because I do feed um, non-GMO. Um, excuse me. With the cold weather, my nose is running. I do feed them um, non-GMO um, Tucker Milling, which is a really good uh, milling company out of Alabama. Uh, it's a really, really good food. Um so they feed, they get a really good feed. And then lately here, this past week, with the weather being as nice as it has been, um, I've started letting them out to free range during the day for several hours, especially in the evening. Let them get a lot of greens and get all the bugs and hopefully eat all these. Hopefully they're eating some of these stupid jarro spiders that we've got hanging out. So... So I'm actually, because this one is singing her little song to me and making such a ruckus, um, I'm going to quickly tell you what's been going on with her. So this is actually, this is, I have actually renamed her Bertha. Um, and she is quite distressed because she's in a kennel in the back of my car. She is not having a good time at all. And the reason that Miss Bertha is in the back of my car is because she started to crow um two or three weeks ago actually probably about a month and a half ago i went down to the coop and it was dark so i startled them and i knew i startled them but i was like i heard a crow and i was like okay well i don't have a rooster so i don't know what's going on because i've had roosters grow up and i know when they start crowing how they sound and usually they start crowing around four months um three months four months they'll start the, kind of like a an adolescent boy learning starting to get his deeper voice um so yeah she's, she's really just not happy with me at all as you can tell um so i didn't hear any of that so i'm like i know i don't have any roosters so um i didn't see which one it was so then about two weeks later, it happened again. And around that time, shortly after, I actually noticed that it was her. And I started noticing her trying to mount the other hens, especially the ones that are laying. And one morning, I was standing outside the back door watching, and she actually stood on top of one of the other hens for a solid 30 seconds close to a minute so that's not acceptable behavior the hens buck her off as soon as she gets on top of them they do not want her on top of them which is what also tells me that she's not really a rooster um she just thinks she is um they don't want her to mount them she also the majority of her characteristics are not rooster like she has a rounded tail, not a floofy tail. She does have, if you can tell, she does have a very large comb. Oh, sorry about that. She does have a very large comb. She actually has a very large waddle, and they're bright red, like you would expect to see in a rooster. However, her tail is nice and rounded. Um, she is starting to grow spurs but i think that that's just kind of a that's kind of one of those things that she, i mean she's kind of talking herself into being a roo now there i know that sounds funny but there are instances um and i had this happen at, with my bantam flock a couple of years ago um i had three little hens and one of them occasionally would cock a doodle do um she never went full-blown rooster. She never mounted the other birds. She would occasionally become aggressive with the other ones a little bit, um, which is not that unusual. Um, but she never, you know, she never developed the full plume tail. She never, you know, she actually never mounted the other one. She would just, she would sound the alarm when there was something to be alarmed about. Um, if the dogs would come running out the back door and startle her, or if there was a hawk overhead. Um, there were a couple of times when there was a bird or a hawk overhead, and, and I heard her, her sound the alarm. She would crow. Um, but if you listen to this one, that's not typical rooster. That's hen. That's hen sounds. That's not rooster sounds. 
<laughs> I mean, I've been, I've had chickens for how many years now? 2014 is when I first started. So eight years. I've had chickens for eight years now. And, and that's, yeah. So I am 90% confident that it's not some glitch in the system and this is actually a roo. Um, I'm probably 40 or 50% confident that she may not be a hermaphrodite. That's always a possibility. Extremely rare. Always a possibility in any animal. That you can have one animal that has both sex organs. So it's it's possible. Doubtful, but possible. Um, so that being said, she is going to a new home. She's going to a free range flock that already has a rooster. Um, it's a friend of a friend, so she's going to go live a little bit further north, which is fine. She's a, she's a dual purpose breed. She's a heavy breed. She's actually a really, really large bird, which is another, another problem because she's almost twice the size of the other birds. So I think she's eating more of the feed than she, than that she's allowing them to eat. Um, because she thinks she's a rooster and because she thinks she needs to grow big and strong and fast. So I think she's eating more of the food than the others are. So, um, so yeah, she's going to a flock with, I think, I can't remember how many, um, hens this girl has, but she's building her flock and, and wanting to add more hens. Um, but she's, she also has a rooster. So the plan, hopefully what I've talked to her about is um, I'm encouraging her to keep her kenneled in some sort of, you know, contained in some sort of way where she can see the flock but not interact with them because I'm afraid if she just lets her out that she'll try to uh, fight with the current rooster and try to establish her dominance. So I'm hoping that she'll be able to separate her where she can see the flock, get to know the flock, the flock can get to know her. But hopefully within that time period of getting to know the flock and realizing that there actually is a rooster available to protect and serve the rest of the hens, that she'll revert back to being a hen. That's our hope. So yeah, so I'm on my way to Lula. Actually, I'm meeting her halfway. Um, I'm on my way. <laughs> She's a crazy girl. Um, I'm on my on my way to drop her off with her new forever home, and um, hopefully that will calm down the rest of the girls enough, um, take enough of the stress off of them that maybe they'll start laying more eggs for us. We're expecting some green and some blue. Um, my friend Krista, who uh, I had bought chickens for and delivered them to her back in. I think it was July, mid-July. Um, she's already getting five, six eggs a day consistently, and she's got brown, blue, and green. So I'm, I'm super jealous that hers are already laying a lot more than mine are. Um, but hopefully, now that I'm getting rid of the stress in the coop, <laughs> hopefully that means that uh, that mine are gonna and the addition, the addition of the light, hopefully. That combination is going to really help them feel comfortable enough to lay. So that's the update for today. I hope you guys are having a fantastic week. If you are one of my friends or one of my followers that's in the Florida Panhandle, the, the entire state of Florida, Puerto Rico, all that, my prayers go out to you. My thoughts and prayers. I, you know, I, I can't imagine. I lived in South Carolina for four years and just the threat, just the word hurricane would, I, it's, it's frightening. Whether you've been there 20 years or you've been there too, and whether you think you're scared or not, it's frightening, especially when a cat four or about to be a cat five comes barreling towards you. So my thoughts and prayers go out to you guys, Savannah, Hilton Head, Charleston, that whole area who's who's potentially going to get hit in the next couple of days um, and just pray that that I that it doesn't barrel up into North Georgia like Irma did a couple of years ago because this house actually was hit pretty significantly when Irma came through a couple of years ago so um, pray for us we will pray for you and we'll see you on the next one have a great day guys bye